Hello, this is Susan Bean, teaching Photoshop. And tonight we're going to look at some selection tools and uh, selection, selecting is a really big part of using Photoshop. When you use it, often you want to isolate an area to work on it so that you won't affect other areas. For example, I, if I wanted to make a person's face lighter, uh, but not the whole picture, or just her hands a little darker, something like that. Um, it's kind of like when you watch painters get ready to paint a house and they tape up all the windows. They're, they're basically selecting the house and not selecting the windows. So when they spray paint all over the house, it won't affect the windows. That's, that's the equivalent of, of doing something in Photoshop, selecting. So there are several selection tools. Tonight, we're just going to look at one tool very thoroughly because um, we'll also look at controls for some of the other tools that it, these same things apply to. So over in the tools, way over on the left, I'm going to zoom in. And show you the selection tools. So this is the top of the tools panel and you see the move tool, the tool on top, and below that the tool that's a little darker. That is called the marquee tool and that's what I'm going to concentrate on tonight. Uh, the shortcut is M for marquee and there are two of them. There's the rectangle that you see and if I press M again, oops, well, clicks at me. Um, that's the move tool, V, and here's the marquee tool. There, there's the other marquee tool. So it's called the ellipse, elliptical marquee, it's a fancy word for oval or circle. And there's back to the rectangular marquee. So I can toggle between one and the other. Um, if you've set up your tools the way I set up my tools, way at the beginning, one of the first videos that we did. So those are selection tools, and they only select rectangles and ovals. Well, what good is that? And I, I plan to show you. Below those are the lasso tool. There are two different lasso tools that we use. And below that are the really easy selection tools the um, object selection tool, the quick select, and the magic wand. They're really easy and wonderful, but it's really important to know the other selection tools. So I'm going to start with the marquee, then I'm going to go to the lasso tools, and last, I'll show you the much easier tools and you'll appreciate them all the more, but you'll also know some important things about them. Um, up above on the options bar that has the, the uh, controls for the selection tools, you'll notice that there's a series of little box-like icons here. Those are very important and we will talk about those thoroughly. And then there's, oh, and then, let's see, then there's something called Feather, anti-alias. We always, by default, we always ignore that and leave it on, makes things look less jagged. Um, feathering, we'll talk about that. And that's all for now. So the marquee tool, there it is. And I'm going to zoom back out. And I'm going to type M for the marquee tool. And I have a picture here. And I usually I wouldn't need to select a rectangular area, but maybe I've decided I'm going to make a poster. And I want a rectangular area that's a solid color so that I can put some type uh, without seeing the photograph in that area. 
So all you do to use the rectangular marquee tool is just click and drag a rectangle. And if I didn't get it exactly where I wanted, I can keep dragging. I haven't let go yet, but I realize I want it down a little bit. Before I let go, if I want to resize it, I can, still holding on to it, I can hold the space bar and reposition it. The space bar allows me to reposition things while I'm making a selection. All right, that's where I want it. I'm going to let go. And you now see a rectangle defined by these little moving white, um, the moving white border, and that has a technical name in Photoshop, and the technical name really is marching ants. Those are the marching ants. When you see marching ants, it means that right now you can only work in that area, and the things you do will only show up in that area. So if I decide to paint, take my brush here, if I decide to paint, it's only letting me paint in the selected area. Now I've made a big mess. I'm going to undo that. Just wanted to show you um, the effect of selecting something. So I'm going to, now I, I want to get rid of this. It's, I want to actually fill it with a color, which I can do, but I want to show you an easier way to do that. So I have it selected. I want to deselect. I want to do something else. So deselect, very easy to remember shortcut. And since you use it constantly, you will probably remember it after not too long. Command, or con command on, a, on a Mac, control on a PC, with D for deselect. Command D, there it goes. All right, now I have nothing selected. Um, just a short footnote, if you accidentally select a tiny little area, sometimes you don't even see it, it could be as small as one pixel, and you try to work on your picture, like, oh, da 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 I think I'll paint on my picture, and nothing works, this is another important part of troubleshooting. Where do you go first? Am I on the right tool? Well, yes, I'm, I'm on the brush tool. Uh, are the settings weird? No, it says normal, the opacity's okay. Um, am I on the right layer? Yes, although you should never really paint directly on the background layer. Um, so I've just done all the basic, the one, two, three of troubleshooting tools, settings for the tools, layers, none of that's wrong. The problem is I have a tiny selection and I don't even see it sometimes and I'm trying to work and it will only work in that area. So if you don't see a selection, but you've checked all the other usual suspects and nothing else is wrong, deselect and all of a sudden magically things will work. So troubleshooting, check tools, check options for the tools, check, la check layers, and deselect. If you don't think there's anything selected, there might be just a little tiny thing selected that you're not even seeing. All right, back to the marquee tool. I have a rectangle, and this time I'm gonna use something that we learned about in a previous video. We learned that there are these things called adjustment layers. And I wanted one of them is a solid color adjustment layer. So on the layers panel, at the bottom of the layers panel, there's that little symbol that looks like half a circle with half dark and half light. And I'm going to press down. And the very first thing on the list is solid color. Before I make that, I'm going to 
Use the Marquee tool to select the rectangle. Now I'm going to go and get that adjustment layer, solid color, and I don't like the color it's offered, so I'm going to move my eyedropper and I'm going to get a color from the picture. There. Say OK. So the rectangle was selected. The marching ants magically vanished as soon as I made an adjustment layer. And if you look over at the layers panel, there's the color fill layer that I asked it to make. And right next to it is what's called a mask. And that mask is reflecting what I had selected. So let's take a look at it. I'm just going to click for a minute. This is what it looks like. Everywhere that the, the mask is white, the color fill layer, the adjustment layer that I made shows and does some sort of adjustment that I've asked it to do. Everywhere it's black, it it's invisible. It's like erasing it. So I'll put that back. I just wanted to show you that. So here's our rectangle. And now if I wanted to put type on top of it, I could, I could make a type layer. I'll do that in a minute. Um, I can also, because it's its own layer, I can control the opacity. So I'm going to type V for the move tool. And now I just type a number on the keyboard to control the opacity of that layer. So 50%, 60%, 90%, 30 percent. So now I can still see the photo, but if I put type, I can It'll help me see the type. All right. Now I think, you know, that's that's nice, but what if I, I think I'd like to try a circle instead. So I'm gonna turn off the eyeball of that layer. I might, even, I might end up throwing it away. I might keep it, I haven't decided yet. I'm gonna go to the Marquee tool and Type M to get there, and then type M again to get to the elliptical marquee tool, the, the oval. All right. And it's a good thing that I am now in the habit of looking up in the controls for the tool, because there's a setting that would be quite disastrous. And if I was just learning Photoshop, I wouldn't understand what was going on, and it would not be working. and Oh dear. So the thing that I'm seeing, let me zoom in for you. The thing that I'm seeing is these little boxes up in the controls for this tool. Very important little boxes. Whatever choice of these, there's there's one, two, three, there's four different icons. The leftmost the center, the third, and the fourth. Well, whatever one of these icons you use to control the tool, it stays there until you change it again. So the last person that used this had this little square checked. That's not what we want, but I looked and I caught it. So let's look at what they do. Um, they're very important. This one, the one on the, the little box icon on the far left, is kind of a disaster because it's called new. And what it means is when you select something, I'm going to select a circle here, or an oval. When you select something, the next time you use the tool, let me select another one, it automatically drops any other selection. So every time I use it, the old, it, it basically no short-term memory is what it is. It, it drops the old one and makes a new one. Drops the old one and makes a new one. Uh, that's usually a disaster. There's one fancy retouching technique 
where this is actually useful and you and it's a good behavior. But that's the only exception. Usually, uh, I, I learned this uh, once. I was using a selection tool that outlined things, and it's very tedious and very hard. And I was making, I was outlining a map. And I went all the way around, outlining, outlining, outlining. And then I clicked again and the whole, all my work disappeared because it was on this version I hadn't noticed. So that was the last time I needed to do that. All right, so we don't want it on that box, the new selection box. It's a disaster. What we do want is on the next one, add. And here's what that box does. Here's the behavior that that makes it do. We have a selection. And you can see my cursor now has a little plus. And that makes me happy because it's telling me it's on add. So I have one circle that I've selected. I can select another and another. It's adding to my selections. Every time I make a new selection, it just adds them. If I go like this, it merges anything that touching. So if I make a selection, I can edit it by adding more areas, more selected areas. I guess I'm making clouds now. And then the next one is minus. I can take away parts of a selection, something I've selected. However, I don't usually move my cursor up there and click on minus. What I do instead is when I'm selecting, I keep it on plus. I select areas that I want to add. And then if I want to take away an area, I move my hand on the keyboard to the Option key. On the PC, it's the Alt key. And all of a sudden, if you see my cursor, it has a little plus. As I press and hold down the Option or Alt key, now you see there's a minus. And that it will stay minus and minus things as long as I hold down the Option or Alt key. So I don't need to go up to the minus. You can see it, it actually is reflected there. You can go up to the minus thing, but it's easier to toggle between plus and minus just by holding or letting go the option or alt key. So right now I'm in minus because I'm holding the key. As soon as I let go, I'm in plus. So I can go between plus, hold the alt or option key, minus, Drill holes in the middle of things. There. So that being on the plus version is now the default. If I go to another tool and then come back here, it will be on plus. It will stay on plus unless I change it. There's one more um, little icon up there. And I used it the other day, and I, I'm pretty sure it was the first time in this decade that I used it. I think I've used it one or two other times ever. And that is, it's this far right one, that is where the new selection and the old selection, now there's an X by my cursor, where the new and old selection overlap, make that a selection. So watch, boom. Huh, that's a good way of making a cat's eye. Uh, I'm gonna deselect and try that again. Here's a, a circle. And now I'm gonna, that's my first selection. And now where that selection overlaps with this selection, It's pretty useless um, until it's just the thing. So I'm going to deselect Command D, and 
Now you know what those little boxes are and you keep it on the plus and that's the default until otherwise notified and you when you want a, that's when you want a minus you hold the option or alt key. All right, so I'm going to minus this. Yes, no pixels are selected, I know. All right. So, that's that's one of the that's some some things about the marquee tool. Let's look at another thing. I'm going to go back to the rectangular marquee tool just by typing M again. Here's a rectangle. And I'm going to no, I'm going to deselect. What if I wanted when I draw the rectangle, what if I want a box right across her chest like this, I can reposition it if it's not where I want. I haven't let go yet, so I'm holding the space bar and I'm repositioning it. What if I want oops, centered on her face? Well, if I try to do that, usually, and I go like this, it draws down it draws from the corner and down. What if I wanted to draw it out from the middle? Deselect. If I hold the Option key or Alt on a PC, it draws out from the center. And I don't know if you notice, but when I started drawing it out, it, it didn't and then I had to do something, and I've discovered the trick to it, deselect. The trick is, if you're trying to draw out from the center and it doesn't, you let go of the Alt key and punch it again, and that kind of gets its attention, and now it's drawing out from the center. So that's holding the, the Option or Alt key while you click and drag the shape, draws it out from the center. Holding the, sh the space bar allows you to reposition it before you let go. There. All right. Um, I'm going to deselect. And let's look at uh, the next thing, which is feather. So up by those little square icons, just to the right of them, is something that says feather. And it, right now it says the default is zero pixels. That also remembers the previous settings forever until you change them. So it's important to look up there and make sure they're what you want. It's very important to look up there and make sure it's what you want. Usually you want zero feather, but not always. So I'm going to make, I'm going to type M again. I'm going to make a circle. Oh, and this is something I didn't mention yet. It's making an oval. And I'm trying to make a circle. And maybe it's a perfect circle. Maybe it's not. If I add the, before I let go, if I add the shift key, the shift key constrains it. Can you see that? It's a perfect circle. And if I want to reposition it, I can hold the space bar, drag it around till I get it just where I want it. Boom. All right, so there's a circle. And I'm going to fill it with a color by going to Adjustment Layer, Solid Color. And I'm going to click around and get a color that I like. Here it is. Notice that the edges of this circle are very sharp, very abrupt. Sometimes that's just what I want. But in this case, I want it to kind of fade on the edges. I want soft edges. So I'm going to turn that one off for a minute, turn the eyeball off on that layer. I'm going to try it again, but this time, 
before I make the, the selection, I'm going to change feather. I'm going to click on the word feather and drag until I get to about, I'll have to guess, about 20 pixels. All right. So I have to pick a number of pixels for it to fade out. Um, there isn't a recipe for this. It depends how high resolution your picture is. For example, if this picture is made out of a million pixels and I feather at 20, you won't see much, much difference. If, if it's made out of 100 pixels and I feather at 20 pixels, you'll see a huge difference. So it's kind of a percentage thing. All right, so I'm going to draw this out from the middle. It ha it's going to have about 20 pixels worth of feathering, and here we go. I'm going to hold the Option key to draw it out from the middle, and then it's not doing it, so I'll punch it. Now it is obeying me. I'm going to reposition by holding the space bar. Let go. And it looks kind of like the other one until I go to the an adjustment layer, solid color. And you can already see before I even pick the color how soft how the edges are fuzzy. That is feathering. Now, I don't use it very often, but if I don't remember to change the feathering back to zero, the next time I select something, it will have this, again, it will have this much feathering, and I might not notice till it's like, oops. So it's a good idea to set the feathering back to zero once you've used it, unless, unless that's something you want to do all the time, have, have soft edges. All right, so I'm going to set it back to zero. It's not going to affect what I've already made. Kind of like a woodworking tool. Once you use a setting on a saw and you saw the wood, you change the setting on the saw, the wood's not going to change. That's kind of like it is here. If I put it back to zero in feathering, this still has feathering. But the next time I use the, the marquee tool, it will have zero feathering because that's the new default. All right, um, let's see. I'm going to try a few things. I don't like this very much. I'm going to throw that layer away by dragging it to the little trash icon at the bottom of the layers panel. Kind of like that. And I think I'll turn, I'll go to the move tool B and I'll turn the opacity up. Oops, didn't go to didn't go to the move tool. It's typing V in feathering. Okay, let's try that again. Return V. There we go. And now it's not doing anything, and so I did my troubleshooting. I looked at the tools. I was not on the right tool, and I went to the right tool. And the settings for the move tool are fine. I wasn't on the right layer. Um, the layer that I have selected has its eyeball turned off, so I wasn't doing anything. So I have to select the right layer. So as I work and as I do these tutorials, I'll make mistakes. I would like to say they're deliberate, but they're not. Um, it's just part of working. You, just, you know, you get going and doing something, and all of a sudden something's not right. So. Troubleshooting is so important because who wants to be frustrated when you're trying to learn something or do something creative? Uh, so that's why I really emphasize it. And you'll learn from my mistakes, and that'll be even better. Um, I hope that if you like these, I hope you're finding some, some time to practice some of these things. Um, they don't really stick unless you practice them a lot. And I find that Photoshop, learning Photoshop, is a, a gradual process. You learn a little bit here, a little bit there. You get stuck here. You never get stuck the same place again because it was so frustrating, so you remember it. Um, it, it happens in dribs and drabs. 
and hopefully this will be a good a good drib. Um, I'm going to. I've been trying to change the the uh, opacity of this, and I want to. I'm going to use the type tool, so I'll type T for type tool, and I'll type her name. And move that down. And now I'm thinking this might look good with a vignette. It might look good if the edges were darker. And there are all kinds of ways to do that. But using the marquee tool is a really nice way to do that. So I'm going to turn this layer off for now. I'm going to turn that layer off for now. And let's um, use the a nice oval. No, no, it is. There we go. Um, I'm going to start. I'm checking the settings. No feathering. Here's an oval. And now I want to reposition it before I let go. I'm going to hold the space bar, move it over, drag it out a little, hold the space bar again. All right, so I have her selected now, but really what I want is everything except her selected. So I'm going to go to the select menu and select the inverse. That means select the opposite. There's a shortcut when you're trying to learn things in Photoshop. If you go to the menu and do something several times, that's kind of a hint that you should probably use, probably learn the shortcut. And this uh, right opposite the description of what this does is the shortcut. So in this case, it's Command Shift I for inverse. On a PC, it would be Control Shift I for inverse. So right now, she's selected. When I do this, everything except her is selected. She's protected, everything else is selected. And I'm going to go to Adjustment Layers. And I could do Solid Color. Let's do something different. We did Solid Color already. Let's do Levels. Levels is, changes the contrast of things. And as soon as I did that, a little Levels layer appeared. And there's a mask. I'll show you the mask. That's the mask. You can see that area that I selected is, is masked off. And the white areas, that's where we'll see the levels adjustment. So nothing's happened because I haven't looked down at the properties and changed them yet. But I'm going to make the midtones darker by moving the midtone slider. And here we go. You can vignette. And if I if if that's too much, I can make it more subtle. If I had feathered the over the, uh, the oval, it would be the edges would not be hard edges; they'd be soft edges. And if I had feathered it a lot, they'd be really subtle and kind of just the vignette would fade very softly. There, there's a vignette, and because I did that on a layer, I can change the opacity of that layer. Go to the Move tool, type numbers to get different opacities. I like that one. And turn this on, turn the type on. All right. So 
that's how you use the marquee tool. And that's how you use the little boxes to indicate adding or taking away areas that are selected. That's what feathering is. And a couple more things. There's something that says style, normal, and you have a choice when you select. If you only wanted to select squares, for example, you could do fixed ratio and you could just type in one to one and it will always select squares. Or a lot of times you're doing a photograph and you want it to fit in an eight by 10 frame or in a five by seven frame. Um, you can actually, you can, you can, change the crop tool, but if you're trying to see what would fit, this is an eight by 10 ratio. So if I select something, even an oval, this area will, will fit in an eight by 10 frame. All right, I'm gonna deselect and see if there's anything I forgot. After every, video, there's always something that I I think, oh, I should have shown that, but it can be overwhelming. So I kind of pick and choose what I, what I show. I don't show you everything because it, it's too much. Um, and I can, I will go back and I've, I make notes of what I didn't show that I want to include. And at one point we'll have a catch up session and add things. I remembered something a minute ago and now it's out of my head, so I'll have to do it another time. Um, I'm going to play one more little. Oh, I, I know what it is. Okay, I'm going to make, um, I'm going to add some stripes to this because I like stripes. So if I want it to be the same in the same area that the vignette is, I can do this. I can make an adjustment layer and I'm going to make a pattern adjustment layer. And there are the stripes. Say OK. And I will turn down their opacity by going to the Move tool, V, and then 50%, maybe 30%, we'll turn it way down. So I want it to be in the area where the vignette is. I don't really want it to be on her face. And over here in the levels layer, maybe I should zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Over here, the levels layer has that a mask that I made by selecting that area and selecting the opposite. I want that same mask for the pattern layer. So I can come over here and hold the option key down and drag that mask. Let's see if it'll let me do it while I'm zoomed in. I'm dragging it and I'm gonna drop it on the pattern layer. It's not letting me do it while I'm zoomed in. So I'll zoom out, but that's, that's at least you can see where I'm doing it. I'm holding the option key. And a lot of people don't know this, but on a computer in general, including a PC and a Mac, option dragging or on a PC alt dragging is a way to copy things. Like if you have a file folder on your desktop, you can option or alt drag it and you'll have a copy of it. Um, it's just a basic computer thing. All right, so I'm holding the option key, grabbing the mask, dropping it over the mask for the pattern fill. Replace layer mask. Yes, that's scary, but right now the pattern does, it just has a white mask, so we'll replace it. Now you can see they look, similar. And in fact, the stripes just shows up where the mask lets it show, where the white areas are in the mask. 
If I want the opposite, I can change the mask, command invert, and do that again. All right, so that's enough. It's probably a little too much. Um, we will continue and, and the next video will be the lasso tools. I would say that the lasso tools are super important to uh, be able to work fluidly and well in Photoshop. They're not everyone's favorite tools because they can be tedious, but they're, they're crucial. So we will look at those and then we'll go on to the fun selection tools after that. Thanks for watching.